Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Omni Viewer, and I'm taking a slightly different format with this video because I'd like it to feel a bit more conversational. A few months prior to the posting of this video, a YouTube commentator who goes by Patrick Parentheses H. Willems made a video called Shut Up About Plot Holes, in which he proceeded to try making a case for why plot holes should not be considered that big of a deal when it comes to analyzing and critiquing works of art particularly movies. It was one of the most egotistical, poorly thought-out arguments I have ever seen in my entire life. And when it was first released, I was very tempted to make a response to it. But over the days as I was trying to think of a way to respond, I noticed other people were beating me to the punch, and as I watched those responses, I thought, well, I don't really have anything new to add to the argument because those people are pretty much saying all the things I would have said. So I let it go for a little bit, figuring it would just be one of those things that was a big deal for a little bit, but then would eventually go away very quickly. Turns out it hasn't. I've seen a couple videos of late that, for some reason, are keeping the topic alive. I don't know if it's just beating a dead horse or if this really is an ongoing debate that we haven't reached a resolution to yet. I would have thought it's cut and dry, but here we are. So part of the reason why I've decided to throw my hat into the ring now is because over time I have thought of other things that can be said in the matter, but also because of the people I've seen responding to Patrick Parentheses H. Willems, I don't believe many of them are actual storytellers. They're commentators as well, yes. They are writers insofar as they write down their material, at least I assume they do. But as far as storytellers, people who actually make fiction, either in the form of movies or video games or any sort of medium that would require you to have a story with characters and a beginning, a middle, and an end, I don't think there are that many. So that's where I come in. I actually am a storyteller. I've got a published book with more on the way, soon, hopefully. I've got an ongoing audio drama on this channel. So I'm not going to sit here and say that I am the greatest storyteller in the world, but I am still a storyteller. So I do have a slightly different perspective than just someone who does commentary on things. So my own personal stance on plot holes is that I do think they are important. Now, if you are just a casual audience member who sees escapism purely as a means of turning off your brain for a little bit so you really don't care what's going on in it as long as it distracts you for a little while, well, that's your prerogative. If you really don't care, no one can really force you. But I do feel that if you are a storyteller, you should care. It should be a priority for you. It should be just as important as every other aspect of the work you're trying to make. Now, true, I am on record in other videos as saying that if I had to choose between a story with a good plot and a story with good characters, I will take the characters any time because they're the ones you get attached to. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I will shun the plot. Ideally, you should have a good plot and good characters. And even if you don't really have the best plot, it's not the most complex thing ever, it's still something that should make sense. The idea of any work of fiction is that it is creating the illusion of reality. You get invested in a work of fiction because it has that verisimilitude. It presents itself to you as a true story worth getting invested in. Whether or not it actually is true is immaterial. What matters is that you believe it. And anything that breaks that believability, anything that takes you out of the experience of believing in that world, well, that's a problem. Sometimes it's bad special effects if you're talking about a movie, or bad acting, again, if you're talking about a movie. Sometimes it's just bland dialogue, but sometimes it is also a plot hole. And a plot hole is a big deal. If it is something that, in the moment or over time, makes you go, wait a minute, 
that makes absolutely no darn sense, and the story completely falls apart once you realize it, that is a problem. That breaks your immersion. So that alone is enough to justify the idea that plot holes are important and should continue to be discussed. Part of what spurred me to make this video was that I saw Bennett the Sage, who does Anime Abandon, he provided a little commentary on the plot hole controversy, and among the things he said was that a plot hole is inevitable. Every story has a plot hole, so in a way they are unavoidable. I don't really think that's completely true. I think what would have been more accurate to say is that plot holes can still happen despite all your efforts. It is possible that no matter how much effort and care you put into crafting your story, you can still potentially miss something. But to say they're unavoidable is inaccurate because a lot of the times when people point out a plot hole, what do they also do? They point out a way it could have been avoided. Hey, if this had been done instead of what actually happened in the story, then there wouldn't be a plot hole anymore. That is the very definition of avoidable, if you can avoid something. So yeah, in the end, I think it's more accurate to say that Plot holes can still happen despite how meticulous you are. No matter how much attention you put into crafting anything, there's always the potential that something is gonna slip past you. Maybe it's something minor, maybe it's something huge, but either way, it can still happen. Of course, that's why we have proofreaders, but something can even slip past them. So, it's more that the potential for plot holes is unavoidable, rather than plot holes themselves being unavoidable. And I think that's important to make a distinction of. Now, it's also interesting to think that most of the people who are taking the side of plot holes don't matter usually point to examples of stories where the plot itself is kind of secondary. Things like action movies or uh, sci-fi, superhero, fantasy, those kind of things. Stories where it's clearly not set in the real world, not quite using the same level of logic we would use in reality, and therefore, I hate to really say it, but there's kind of that built-in excuse of it's a different circumstance we couldn't possibly know how to react in, so who's to say it really is a plot hole if something like XYZ happens? So, I don't know. Whether or not that actually is an excuse is a whole other discussion. So maybe some action-packed thriller that's just about the hero trying to stop the villain, so the plot doesn't really matter much beyond that. Maybe in that particular case, plot holes might not matter. It really does vary, I think. But, what if we were to look at a particular genre wherein the plot is important? Where the plot is actually central to everything? A good example I can think of would be the mystery genre. Now, don't get me wrong. The mystery genre is very character-driven as well. Heck, some of the most iconic characters of all time have spawned from the mystery genre. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. John Watson, I mean, look no further than those two. But at the same time, mystery is still very plot-driven. The thing the characters are focused on is the plot. And the plot, regardless of what the story is, always comes down to, well, solving a mystery. Sorry to be rather blunt and obvious in that regard, but it's the truth. We have to agree on that, right? The mystery genre is defined by the fact that the characters are trying to solve a mystery. The mystery is the plot. Pretty much every time you can think of. And moreover, the plot of a mystery is something that needs to make sense by the end. Once you get to the final part of the mystery, whether it's the end of a movie or the last page of the book or whatever, 
the idea is that all of the stuff you've experienced before then comes together. All the pieces fall into place and either you've been following it yourself, putting the pieces together on your own, and you see whether or not you got it right, or if you're like me, perhaps, where you get so involved in the story that you forget to put all the pieces together yourself, you find out who it is and then you can go back and see, oh, so that's the significance of that part. That's the whole idea. So, in that regard, everything that happens within the plot needs to make sense. Ergo, I would say that, in the mystery genre particularly, a plot hole could be devastating. A plot hole would in fact be something you would not want to shut up about, because if a plot hole exists in a mystery, and it unravels the ending, the resolution, then you've got a bad mystery on your hands. Now to be fair, there are always degrees of plot holes. Sometimes they're minor. And in the mystery genre, I can think of one example in particular that would be a minor plot hole. Something that ultimately doesn't destroy the entire story. That would be The Long Goodbye by Raymond Chandler. It's a Philip Marlowe mystery. Definitely one of the best hard-boiled detective stories of all time. If you haven't read it, do so. But, I'm going to be going into spoilers here, so... Well, it's kind of unavoidable if you're going to know what I'm talking about. I guess just in case, here's a timestamp, jump to that point if you want to avoid the spoilers. It's not really that big of one, but it still is technically a spoiler, so... Otherwise, stick around so you can hear what I have to say. Now, The Long Goodbye is one of the greatest hard-boiled detective novels of all time, like I said. But by the time you get to the end, there's still one lingering question. Who killed the driver? There's a driver who shows up in the story, and he is killed. It's very clearly murder, it's very clearly connected to the bigger case, and it's very clearly something Marlowe is determined to figure out. But nothing ever comes of it. We never get a resolution. We never learn how it ties in. We never learn how the driver was involved. So that's just a lingering question that was hanging over the novel for years. People kept proposing all these different resolutions, but nothing really fit. There was no really satisfying answer anyone could come up with. So here we had a literal hole in the plot no one could fill, and that hole was what happened to the driver. Eventually, someone just asked Raymond Chandler point blank, who killed the driver? How does that fit into the greater mystery? And you know how Chandler responded? Maybe you do, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Chandler responded by saying, huh, you know, I actually forgot all about him. There you go. The reason no one could figure out an answer was because there was no answer. Raymond Chandler, who is one of the greatest mystery writers of all time, he had one slip past him. But I bring that up to show you that it is possible to have a minor plot hole. And ultimately, everything else about the story works so well that even though what happened to the driver is still fun to speculate on, it doesn't really bring the story down at all. Nor does it make people hate the story. But what if we were to compare it to something that doesn't work out so well, partly because it is so full of plot holes as to be comparable to Swiss cheese? Let's turn to our good old friend J.J. Abrams and go to Lost. Lost was very much a mystery-driven show. Every week, people tuned in specifically for the mystery. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't know who these people were. We didn't know where they were. We didn't know what else was on that island with them. It was intriguing. It really got the synapses firing. We wanted to know the answers. So, the showrunners provided us with clues. And as the show continued, they provided us with more clues. And more clues were piled on top of those. And eventually, the clues started to contradict each other. 
there were so many different instances in Lost wherein we had a question and we had different clues pointing to multitudes of different answers, but they couldn't all be the right answer and they couldn't all coexist as answers. The clues would not fit together that way. So people started to wonder if perhaps there were no answers. Over time, people realized that the answer to that question of, are there answers, was a resounding no, and people began to drop the series. Most of the people who stuck with Lost to the end, I'm pretty certain were only sticking with it just to see how they could possibly tie up all the loose ends. It was kind of a sadistic reason, if you think about it. And how did the showrunners tie everything up? They didn't. Really, they barely even tried. They picked answers that fit some of the clues, but again, didn't fit all of them because that would have been impossible, and just slapped together an ending for the last episode of the show. It was a huge disappointment. But here's the crazy part. When people got upset, that Lost didn't have a good ending, that it didn't answer all of those questions, that they had spent all this time watching a show, believing there were going to be answers, only to have the rug pulled out from under them and realize that there were never any answers in the first place. Do you know how the showrunners responded? Again, maybe some of you do, but if you don't remember, they responded by saying, Oh no, no, you don't understand. Lost was never about the plot. It was about the characters. Now, if that sounds at all familiar to any of you, or if you're getting a sense of deja vu, it's because that's a variation on a theme, and that theme being what Patrick parentheses H. Willems phrased as, You're watching movies wrong, in his video, Shut Up About Plot Holes. That's right, folks. This is not a new argument. When people expressed their dissatisfaction with the ending of Lost, the writers declared that the reason people didn't like the ending wasn't because the writers had written themselves into a whole bunch of corners. It was because the audience missed the point of the show somehow. They were watching it wrong. They were thinking it was about these grand mysteries when really they should have been focusing on the characters. And, just like today, people didn't buy that. The response was a resounding cry of, Bull! This show was always about the mystery, and you darn well knew it. You guys made every single episode into an open-ended story where there were more questions presented than answers in order to keep us coming back, and you kept promising us that there would be those answers. And even if the show was supposed to be about the characters, the characters themselves were also shrouded in mysteries, because J.J. Abrams, who ultimately had final say on the whole thing, has been very clear, as you can see in his TED Talk, that he sees character development as just another kind of mystery box. So, the characters were also shrouded in mystery. Their stories had mysteries to them. The show was always about the mystery. It wasn't the people who were watching it wrong, it was the people who couldn't make the mysteries work. That's what went wrong with Lost. And as a result, Lost is full of plot holes. The plot holes came about because, like I said, the showrunners were piling clues on top of clues on top of clues. All of those clues leading in different directions that couldn't possibly coexist. So that by the time you got to the end and you actually were supposed to get some of those answers, there was no way they could possibly tie all of them together. No matter what answers they went with, there was always going to be something that didn't line up. Something that would fly right in the face of that solution, thereby generating a plot hole. As a result, Lost has gone down in entertainment history as one of the biggest disappointments of all time. Something that started strong but finished poorly. Whereas, The Long Goodbye is still remembered as a classic, even to this very day. Also, let's be honest, the characters on Lost, not really the best.
But at the end of the day, if you really want to know why a story that's riddled with plot holes fails, it comes down to care. People who are not careful are people who are more likely to write nonsensical things. And not in a Lewis Carroll, I'm deliberately being nonsensical kind of way. I mean something that should make sense and yet doesn't because of something like a plot hole. I feel that to say that plot holes really don't matter and should not be discussed is a dangerous idea to put forth in the realm of entertainment because what it's basically doing is giving storytellers permission to be lazy or to be careless or to just not bother listening when their proofreaders or their editors or whoever is supposed to give them oversight tells them, hey, this part doesn't make sense. I mean, think about it. If plot holes don't matter, why should any effort be put into the story? There is no reason in that case. Just pound something out, however it turns out is the way it turns out, whether it has internal logic to it or not, and there you go. Just send it out like that. But that results in terrible stories. One thing Bennett the Sage said that I do agree with completely is that even if a story does have a plot hole, if the rest of it is exceptional, it's easier to forgive. A story needs to earn the right to have a plot hole ignored, or to have any of its mistakes ignored, really. And the really good stories out there, they're the ones in which the storytellers put a lot of effort and care into making it as good as it can possibly be. Ergo, even if some kind of error, like a little plot hole, does somehow manage to sneak its way in, you can't say it wasn't for lack of trying. But maybe you're the sort of person who doesn't care about the work they do. You're just putting this together and you figure, doesn't matter what's in it, nerds with superiority complexes are going to obsess over every detail anyway because they're nitpickers and they don't have lives or girlfriends, so just let them be the idiots they are. Well, you're going to produce inferior work. History has shown that. And when that happens, and when people call you out on it, because that is a question of when rather than if, you ultimately won't have any leg to stand on when it comes to defending yourself, because you didn't care enough to put in the effort in the first place. So ultimately you should care about plot holes. Of course there's no reason to obsess over them, unless of course you are a storyteller. In that case, you should put every inch of effort you can spare into crafting your work, because that is literally your job. Is it possible some kind of mistake, like a plot hole, will still slip by? Sure it is. Like I said, sometimes it can still happen. They're not unavoidable, but they can still slip by you. But, like I also said, if you put in the effort everywhere else, people are more likely to forgive a minor little issue. So that's my stance. That's the standard I hold myself to. And it's the standard that I expect my editors and my proofreaders to hold me to as well. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.